From simple lines on a television screen to almost lifelike characters, the world of computer animation has come a long way. Today, computer graphics is a multi-billion dollar industry. From high-tech games and design to unbelievable special effects and animated feature films, the power of computer-generated images is everywhere. Sixty years ago, Walt Disney required 1,500 artists to draw the images for his groundbreaking film, Bambi. But in the near future, it will be possible for a film like Shrek to be created by one single animator. We will go on a journey that began with men in white coats in science laboratories and went all the way to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Thank you very much. I'm here till Thursday. Resulting in the most stunning images the world has ever seen. The origins of computer graphics began in the 1950s, at the height of the Cold War. The boffins at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, had developed a computer which they lovingly nicknamed Whirlwind. Not exactly a laptop, this number-crunching monster was created to help the US Navy to calculate the trajectory of its rockets. In 1952, this was a massive breakthrough and catapulted the computer into our world. Today, we almost take the power of computers for granted. But without them, we would not have the amazing images we see every day on our televisions, games consoles, or cinema screens. In 1963, when the mathematicians at MIT came up with a radical new concept that later would become known as interactivity. John, we're going to show you a man actually talking to a computer in a way far different than it's ever been possible to do before. The groundbreaking program was called Sketchpad and was developed as a design tool. If the designer needs a bracket, he makes a rough drawing and then instructs the computer which of the lines should be horizontal and which vertical. The computer obeys the instructions and makes a neat looking bracket. From a basic sketch, the computer followed a set of rules and figured out the rest of the drawing itself. In the 1960s, the automotive industry developed their own programs which were capable of drawing much more sophisticated designs. Then, in 1976, there was another technological milestone, making the computer drawings three-dimensional. The vital tools for creating 3D images with a computer were now in place. It was now up to the artists and filmmakers to discover them. In the 1960s, bored programmers realized that they could create bizarre images with their computers. Experimenters in visual perception are using computers to create weird, random patterns that never occur in real life. In the 1970s, these wacky artists got hold of the computer technology, experimented a little, and went completely psychedelic. Computers could also manipulate and animate pictures. A computer can be instructed to produce motion pictures. This film has been made from a selection of scenes to illustrate some of the distinctive advantages of computer animation. This had enormous advantages over traditional cell animation, which was painstakingly slow, because every single frame had to be drawn by hand. Here are three of the five keyframes used in each cycle of the walk. In Canada, a computer program was devised that could fill in the frames between the keyframes. This revolutionized animation. And in 1974, this program was used to create the first computer animated short film, Hunger, which was nominated for an Oscar. I would say it was about eight or nine years ahead of its time because people didn't know what to make of it at the time. Computer animation had never heard of a thing called morphing before. You know, nothing like that had ever been seen or done before. You know, this was, you know, two decades before, uh, you know, computer animation really started to take off. Years ago, it would have been totally impossible. In the mid-1970s, before the dawn of the microchip, computers are still the size of houses. And men at the cutting edge of technology are still working on two-dimensional line drawings. But the evolution of computer graphics is about to take a giant leap forward. 
In a laboratory, an extraordinary engineering feat is taking place. At the University of Utah, scientists were determined to find a way to recreate a simple object in a computer that was not only three-dimensional, but would also look totally real. The object they chose was a teapot. The teapot turned out to be a very nice test bed of rendering techniques because it has lots of different types of shapes in it. There's large bulbous areas on the main surface. There's a uh, what's called surface of negative curvature along the spout. There's very sharply creased areas around the rim. And after a while, the, the joke kind of got uh, more and more uh, entrenched in the computer graphics business of make a picture of a teapot to show that you can actually draw things. In their quest for realism, they first recreated the teapot as a wireframe in a 3D vector graph. Then they eliminated the lines that would not be seen if the teapot were real. They then applied a process called facet shading, which simulated how light reflects off surfaces. They discovered that it was light that was the key in making an object appear more realistic. The facets were smoothed over to make the shading look continuous. Next, the computer simulates the highlights, figuring out where they should show up and how bright they should be, knowing where the light source was. Then the team developed texture mapping, changing the color from one spot to another on the object. They realized that once you can change the color, you can also change the texture by using light. With bump mapping, you simulate dents and bumps on the surface. And finally, even multiple reflections on the object can be simulated. You have to remember that there is nothing about these stunning images that is real. They only exist in the computer as a sophisticated mathematical algorithm to create an image which is almost indistinguishable from the real thing. The possibilities were endless. Fiat Lux was an experimental film by computer scientist Paul Debevec, which demonstrates his technique of simulating real light. Fiat Lux, I think, uh, impressed a lot of people um, because it, it was so hard to tell, you know, what was real and, and what was sort of scientific experimentation, and yet it all hung together beautifully as, as, a, as a short project. It's just the most beautiful piece of filmmaking. It's just a very, very satisfying uh, work of art. In the 1970s, the boffins who were writing the software were held back by the hardware. The storage of data was limited by computer memory until in 1971, the advent of the Intel microprocessor, or silicon chip, revolutionized the computer world. This meant the computer-generated images, or CGI, made a quantum leap. Now images generated on a computer could be output onto video. This time, it was not the industry or the military, but advertising agencies who spotted the potential of the powerful images that could be created with CGI. The first computer-generated ad was for Brillo. Sexy Robot, in 1983, was the first piece of computer animation, which used the movements of a real person and translated them by using reference points painted onto the body into a computer-generated figure. And all this for tinned food. Even experts couldn't get their heads around these new computer-generated images. I think we should get straight on and look at some of the award winners. Winner of the commercial category. This is again from Britain. It's Robinson Lambinairns and Electronic Arts Get Smarties. <laughs> very, very jolly. This yes, now, when, when I first saw this, I just didn't believe, well, I couldn't understand how it was uh, achieved, but it, well, it is a computer, beautiful modelling, beautiful animation. I mean, look at that model there. Nothing but a computer could actually create these images. No, it would take a they? lifetime, it seemed, to do that, yes. The next generation of commercials directors realized that they could marry computer-generated images with real life and create an imaginary yet lifelike world. Filming an actor in front of a neutral green screen allows his shape to be cut out 
and placed on any real or computer-generated background, or in this case, a combination of both.